Feng approached the table by the window and seated himself across from the messenger. The man responded with an impatient grunt and turned back to his drink. The scar showed strikingly on his cheek. It'll be too dark to travel soon, Feng continued. Unless you know your way around. The messenger poured his wine and drank it all in one gulp. A snare broke out across his scarred face. What do you want? he asked. I'm bringing you a message from the general. Since when did the general hire peasants to deliver his messages? That's how we remain hidden. That's how we hear things and see things. What's the message? The general wants you to know the treasure will be delivered on time, but his daughter must be alive and well. She can't be missing a hair. The messenger threw his head back to laugh, a hollow, high-pitched laugh. He swayed a little, the alcohol affecting his balance, and threw his head back to swallow the remainder of his wine. So he does have the Red Crest. The name of the treasure, the Red Crest. Just bring it, the messenger said. She's alive. I'll tell him. Feng reached over to pour more wine into the messenger's cup. By the way, how much gold can they get for this red crest? Why do you ask? I'm curious. It sounds important. It must be worth a lot of money. The messenger assessed him for a moment. I'm only the messenger. Of course, Feng said. Is the delivery location secure? There may be people around. The general doesn't want his daughter seen in shackles. Really, the messenger said with a laugh. Then I think it's better to keep her hands tied. And if the treasure doesn't show up on time, we can throw her into the water after every one of us has had our way with her. Then we can watch her drown. I'll have you executed in public. Fang drew a deep breath and held himself together. That won't be necessary. The general is preparing the exchange as we speak. I wanted to know... All the instructions are in the letter, the messenger interrupted. And if the general doesn't understand, we can send him some of his daughter's fingers to clarify. Feng held up his hands and flashed a smile. Nothing like that. The general wants assurance that his daughter is safe. Your leader must be an influential man to retain talent like you. You wouldn't harm a young girl for this red crest. The man lowered his cup. The general didn't send you, did he? Who are you? I'm only a messenger. A messenger who asks too many questions. Feng maintained his grin for a moment longer. He leaned closer to whisper something. The messenger, unable to hear him, also leaned forward. Feng drew a knife and stabbed the messenger in the forearm, planting the blade between the two bones above his wrist so deep the knife pierced through the embroidered sleeves and penetrated the wooden table. The messenger screamed. Feng brushed aside the man's sword, grabbed his collar, and yanked his face close. Where is she, you low-life scum? Whom do you work for? The messenger continued to scream. Where is she? Feng shouted. Then, outside in the distance, a shrill whistle approached at alarming speed. A dark cloud was flying in, screaming like a thousand tortured cats. Feng was mesmerized. He was entranced by the idea that something, somewhere, could launch a swarm of missiles so dense it covered the sun. Equally fast, Feng broke out of his trance. He threw himself back and slid under a nearby table, then flipped a bench to cover his body, curled himself into a ball, and held his breath. 
Hundreds of arrows rained through the open windows. The messenger shrieked once as multiple missiles pierced his body. He fell over, face first, leaning into a cluster of arrows embedded in the table. A waiter who had just entered the room was instantly killed. Then, the deafening shriek of another incoming round emerged from the distance. Feng flipped over a nearby table and dragged it closer to shield his body. The second round of arrows pounded the inn, the missiles impacting the floor, furniture, and walls all at once. The missiles seemed to rain forever. When it finally stopped, Feng bit his lip and exhaled. Thousands of arrows blanketed the room. He could barely see the messenger anymore. Mm-hmm.